Welcome back to Hypercritical Reviews, the only show where I'm hypercritical about everything because I'm passionate about movies. Uh, today we're looking at the Edge of Sleep series that recently came out starring Markiplier, the one and only, uh, otherwise known as Mark Fishbuck, but not according to the series credits, which already is kind of a deep dive into the biggest things about this show that I have a problem with. But it's probably first important that I get into <clears throat> the show itself. The Edge of Sleep is a show basically where we follow Dave, played by Markiplier, who has like chronic insomnia or like paranomia or whatever it's called in the series. And everyone that goes to sleep just doesn't wake up and dies. Um, and that's pretty much the show. It's based off the podcast um, also starring Markiplier that was pretty popular with Markiplier's fans and um, the show is doing extremely successfully now it's raining uh, which was like last I checked number six in the US which um, it's all going going according to plan so that's good to hear we also follow three other characters we follow Linda who's a nurse who happened to be awake while everyone else went to sleep and died we follow Mateo, who is Dave's friend in the military, um, on the Air Force specifically, who also uh, was awake when they noticed the pattern. And then there's Katie, who is Dave's like ex-partner or something. Hi, Harlem. I think these characters are pretty solid characters. I'd say that writing-wise, they're not perfect. Um, I'd say nothing in this show is perfect, but it's solid it's all solid and there's a good chunk to, that we can talk about here we're going to jump into the acting first which i'm sure is everyone's big question with you know markiplier and what's that like and how's the acting in general and, and here's what i would say i'd say that most of the time the actors are doing the best that they can with the amount of did with the amount of material that they're given. That being said, it's inconsistent uh, throughout the series. It starts off like Mark is either trying to do something very subtle and everyone else is going overboard. And then as the series goes on, everyone starts to kind of get into their characters. Um, I found Katie's actress to be doing the best that she could with her material, but I didn't find myself liking Katie that much. Um, as a character, I just didn't really see the, I mean, the chemistry, I guess, between Dave and Katie is there, but it feels covered up by everything else that's happening in the story. And I don't feel like that's necessarily a problem if you like plot driven shows, but this is not a character driven show. I mean, it kind of is, but truly I found myself more interested in the plot than in the characters. And I, I think that's kind of why I'm not a big, the biggest fan of the acting. And that's not even that it's, again, necessarily bad. It's just not particularly strong. It's not the strongest part of the show. It's not what keeps your interest when you're watching it, at least not for me. I found Markiplier's acting to be, again, inconsistent. At times I was like, wow, that was a great choice. That was really subtle, but it felt real for the character. And then other times I was like, wow, why are we doing this? So there's like, there's like a scene where Dave's character, where Dave is like looking at something and it's like horrifying him. And so, you know, you need a reaction for this. And so Markiplier's face is, it's like, I don't know if I like that. <laughs> like, I mean, for one, it's already weird enough to see Markiplier in a role that on television that looks so professional and then him playing like completely straight. Um, because he's so personal on camera. I think he's he does a good job, all things considered, but I definitely think that there's some choices and there's some things that aren't played for, I mean, realism or performance. I feel like a lot of it is just to drive the plot along, which, again, makes sense, and I'll get into why in a little bit. I think Linda's acting, um, she did. I liked her character a lot. I think she did a really good job at portraying this nurse who is exhausted who kind of but kind of drives the plot forward. I like her character because she plays it in a way where she doesn't feel too much like she's 
um, trying, like she doesn't feel too like much of a plot device or expositionary character. She feels real and she feels like she's really guiding these people because she is a nurse and she does understand it. And there's a lot more to her character than just, oh, she is a nurse. You know what I mean? Like they kind of go into it a little bit and they don't flush her out a ton. But again, I'll get into that a little bit. Um, Mateo, I couldn't tell if it was just the writing or if it was like um, a part of his character, but everything he did felt very either over the top and for funnies or way too serious. There was never anything in between. It never felt like I was watching a real human being. Um, it felt like I was watching like the producers or whoever was like giving them money for the show say, yeah, I mean, we could do that, but this needs to be funny or like, or can you have him do something more, you know, just like just for entertainment purposes. And I'm like, I didn't enjoy any time that there was a moment that was forced with Mateo. And I, I've never seen, I never listened to the podcast, which um, I've heard there's a lot of different things going on with that, with the podcast. I've never listened to that. And I heard that those kind of differed, but there were some similar plot points and I'm sure that Mateo is a better character there. The only time they really get into Mateo's character is towards the end, and I don't feel like the acting... I feel like only then is his character played properly or played with the best... with the most realism and the most, like, convincing. Again, the show is not built around realism in the actors, so I, I know... or in the acting and performances and stuff like that, or in the dialogue, but when you have a story that takes place around a, like imagining that this is a real event or in a real world, then having acting that's inconsistent and characters that don't necessarily feel real enough to always convince me is something that I think is kind of, it's something that I would think is a little rough. So when Mateo does things like yelling shit and yo all the damn time, and I was like, no, I want to go home, yo. Um, I, yeah, it's literally like that. I don't know why the choice was to do it that way, but I wouldn't have done it that way. <laughs> um, again, because this he has more to his character, but then what originally... Is, it's kind of bad. And then there's Katie's actress, who, again, I think does a good job for what material she's given and how little she's given, arguably. Um, I think there could be a little bit more to her, and I think some of the depth and some of the dialogue and deliveries were as missed at times. Um, this is being hypercritical. That's why it's called hypercritical reviews. But I think that sometimes I was like really convinced of her character. And then other times I was not convinced. And I was like, that was the best choice you could have made. That was the, you put the emphasis there on that part of the line. But also, I mean, everyone interprets a line differently and interprets pieces of work differently, which is on the director to guide these actors. And I think truly that the director had more vision than he did with the act, than he did having, guiding these actors to portray the vision. So that's my thoughts on the acting. I think it's okay. I think it works and I think it does exactly what it needs to, but I wouldn't definitely not, it, like it was still, at times very noticeable that the actors were acting and that can be bad for some people unless you like the story enough which was where I was at the story itself is a little bland it's a little basic but the idea of the story and the concept is very interesting to follow and I love just about every moment that we follow the concept um I like the I the writing is okay I think the dialogue is the worst part, but, um, similar to Moist Critical, I think it's rushed. I think that they didn't have time to get everything that they wanted to do. Um, and I think that while the dialogue can be crap at some times, there's other times where I'm like, wow, that would, that had subtext there. That was good. Or the scenes that they're choosing to write are really well, like are good dynamics to choose to show the audience. Like when they're making moments with, Dave and Katie or Markiplier and his love interest. When they have scenes with them, it makes sense. When they have scenes to show Mateo's character, like when they dive in to try to flesh out these characters, it's really nice to see and it's really refreshing because it shows that they had the right idea when they went into the scenes too and they knew exactly what they wanted from those scenes. But then they'll put it together with another scene to drive the plot forward and sometimes it feels out of place. Sometimes I'm like, that was really where we went. Um, 
And other times I'm like, I don't know why we went that direction. So sometimes like the, there's a part where Dave's character is a kid and it's, we follow Dave as a young kid and there's a doctor. Um, but the doctor is like talking like he's, I don't know. It's, it's, it's kind of all over the place. He, he doesn't feel very convincing and that's, that's his thing, but it, feels out of place like his character and his writing and the way they chose to execute that and I think like I said the dream stuff and the um following all the like supernatural stuff that isn't real was very well done um and I love the metaphors that they have like the whale um which is the first episode and then um a bunch of other like dream sequences that they have that they kind of flesh out um I do think at times it results in too many ideas and too many cooks in one kitchen. But again, I don't think that's on them. And that's where I'm going to dive into the production side of things and what I notice with that. So the production, I think at times it is the best uh, part about the series and the show. Some of the editing is great and fantastic and really amplifies the chaos and everything that you're watching on screen. And then other times it feels like the editing is actually what's killing it because they couldn't find another way to dive around an audio mistake or a mistake in general. Um, there were countless times, especially when you edit stuff, you know how to like cut to someone else, have someone else say a line of dialogue and then cut back to hide a mistake and an error. They do that all the time in the show. Um, there's another part where it's just like the production and the writing are inconsistent. So there's a moment where Dave goes after Katie and like everyone's asleep. Um, so he doesn't want Katie to go to sleep. So he runs after her, um, which is like three miles. Um, but there's like plenty of cars that are left unattended that he could have easily broken into because literally in the scene right before he breaks into a house, uh, I thought that was weird. There's a scene where like, and that happens a number of times too. It's like the car breaks down and it's like, just go get another car. You don't have to worry about like, you can go find a suburban and then they, and then like they do, they like break into an ambulance, but it's like, no, 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 you could have. Okay, whatever, you know? And then there's other moments where I'm like, uh, the color grading does not match the scene here. There's a really small hospital scene or like set. Uh, and it, like you can tell it's a really small set that they had. Um, and then there's other times where it's like the VFX was again inconsistent. There's a scene where they're in a private jet and they're flying and you never see the outside of the plane until the end of that scene but there's no establishing shot of the jet in the sky it's just the sky so it's like it's excusable but the jumps in quality are weird i was trying to like understand why and then it hit me low budget and runtime um and that's why i can give just about every single excuse to this show and excuse a lot of the faults that it has and that's because they did not have any time. There are six episodes, each at 20 minutes. That's two hours. They had probably the budget of a like low-budget movie, which they don't make it anymore. And then they had the runtime for a series of, um, like I said, a movie. So they had nothing. They had nothing going for them. And truly, I feel like just about every reason that the show is bad is or like has flaws is because of the fact that they're trying to work around so many issues production wise. And I would definitely believe that because just about every single moment where it's bad, I'm like, no, they just didn't have time to finish that. Or they probably had to work around a producer yelling at them or Mateo's character is bad because they made them probably like throw in like, um, just a character that's funny. You know what I mean? Or like an entertainment piece Whereas, like, I'm sure the original story doesn't work that way. And then, like, Katie's character is ruined, but I bet you it's because they made them change the way that she acts or the things that she does. Um, because at times she's, like, really nagging and not supportive at all. And then the next scene she's, like, supportive and shows that she's a good person and is really supportive to Dave. But also she's the only reason she drives Dave's story and that's all she does. Um, which is why I like Linda more as a character because Linda doesn't just drive Dave's story. She's actually a character in the story and it feels natural. And then there's other times where it's like that 
was a bad cut. <laughs> Why did we cut there? Oh, there was a mistake that they couldn't patch because they didn't have the budget. The VFX being inconsistent, budget. The runtime, budget. Like, I bet you they cut so many corners and they worked their butts off to try to navigate the whatever they had to do to get this show out and do it to the best of the, their ability. And I think that taking that into consideration, they did a great job. Truly, they did the best that they could with what they were given. Like, the fact that this is low budget and, you know, you can see the amount of care and effort that was put into it, especially by... Because you can... It's like, it's like hidden under the surface, truly. It's like... There's a really great show here and a really, like, honestly, like, not even, like, groundbreaking, but just a good show and a good story to follow and presumably, like, possibly good acting and stuff like that. And I think a lot of it is bogged down by production, the runtime, and budget. And truly, that's not their fault because they're... I mean, they're desperate for whatever they can to get this out. I mean, you saw how passionate even just uh, Markiplier was about the series and getting it out and showing it to everybody. And frankly, if that's the passion that's going into, you know, a season two or, or even Iron Lung, I'm really excited to see what they can do with that because that's exactly what made some of the parts so good. So yeah, I'm I'm excited to see what they have coming up for them. Um, and I'm, I mean, if there's a season two, I'll probably watch it because it was, it kept me invested. And while it wasn't, well, I had a hard time not critiquing every moment there was a choice that I didn't like. Um, I still think like if I were to go back and watch it, I'd watch it and and I'd still be like, yeah, remember that time Markiplier made a show? Yeah. And it wasn't bad. I know. Crazy, right? So overall, I give this about a six out of 10 leaning towards like the higher end of the six. I'm not going to get into decimals because that's boring. I'm just going to state 6 out of 10. It's, again, not the worst show I've ever seen. Certainly far from bad. But, I mean, it, I, it's just bogged down by the budget, the runtime, and stuff like that. If they were given more time and more money, I'm sure the series would be fantastic. That's going to be it for today's hypercritical review. Let me know what you thought. And I will see you next time on the Van Carter channel. Bye for now.